All right, guys. All right, guys. Welcome, Mary. So let's have a discussion now. So today we're talking the number one reason why your sourcing deals always fails. And um, one thing I know is most investors in the past year, we were actually helping investors get to start investing in real estate, starting with no money <clears throat> or little to no money at all. And one of those strategies um, is sourcing deals, meaning finding a deal and sourcing it to an investor for a commission. And um, this is just one of the main strategies that you can use for creative financing. But this is one of the best that most people prefer to do because it teaches you hands on how to find deals, work with investors, run numbers, market research, and you can use the same skills to build your own portfolio as well. And those are the most important things that you know, um, we think, or in our, my team and I think, are the most important fundamentals for investors who are starting out to know how to do. The reason you want to learn how to find investors, work with investors, is because your real estate journey is going to be consistently based on you finding deals and finding the money through investors, especially when you scale. So that's why it's very, very important for you to learn this thing very, very much from a smaller scale and then be able to multiply it and further and further and learn how to raise money and work with investors professionally. But most of you sourcing agents, you fail and fail and fail over and over again. And this is the reason why most of your deal fails. And I did the same thing too. This is why I'm actually making this video. I failed so much. Um, it stressed me out. I think my first two deals were successfully done. On the third one going forward, I had a big, big problem and I'm going to discuss with you in a moment. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to watch this video until the end and tell me what do you think about this video and tell me if you think this is true and if you've experienced it as well, because I did and I don't want you to go through it. If you're somebody who's new to the channel, maybe new to sourcing, this can help you to avoid the same mistake as a hundred other investors and sourcing agents in the market are doing. So first of all, Sourcing agent, in the simplest terms, is somebody who finds a deal for an investor, and then um, also they get paid for that um, uh, uh, finding funders fee, basically. And uh, most agents in South Africa are not so familiar with the idea, or they are new to the idea, and usually they confuse sourcing agents with um, estate agents, and of which we can go into much detail in a video. That's actually a good idea to so just go and, you know, decipher between the two people and their roles in your investment journey as an investor. And also, you know, how do you differentiate between the two and how can you use it to scale your portfolio much faster? Because sourcing agents are the most helpful people you can have on your team. And I promise you that. All right. So the reason why your most deals fail as a sourcing agent is because one important thing you do not have a reliable and qualified buyer. Look, it's simple, right? It sounds simple, but most people miss this part very much. You guys go out there and look for deals, get on the ground and put in offers and do the research, waste your money, your petrol, your time, you know, energy, etc. but you don't have any investor at all. So that can come as shocking to me as many people as they said, you know, uh, find a deal and find the money, which is what you must do. But at the same time, you must also know the type of investor you're looking for. So for example, most of you guys would start with a deal for 2.5 million Rand, right? And you don't know anybody around you who qualifies for 2.5 million Rand who can buy that deal from you or can buy the deal with you. So you're already kicking yourself out of the potential partnership that can happen between you and an angel investor. That's number one. And then some of you guys as well is, you know, you do not understand your investor. You know, you don't understand, you know, what drives an investor and you're just coming and sending very, very, you know, basic proposals. You just give me stuff that you get from Property24 and you send it to me. I can just go and call the agents and do the deal myself. And uh, I'm not going to talk about that right now because the right presentation is something that is very important. If you don't know how to do that, uh, go to NMRI group. You'll get a link below. Register for the training and then learn how to put deals together and find investor properly. But I just want to say something about not being able to find a qualified buyer as well as a reliable 
buyer or investor as well. So one of the most important thing is that not everybody has the same integrity we expect them to have. And then if you find a deal, for example, you call an investor and they come in view, they're gonna ask you, hey, how do you have, how long do you have the deal for? And then you tell them, hey, I have the deal for whatever many days. And then they might just wait for your offer to expire and then they put their own offer and then move forward. Do you want that to happen to you? Yes, it happened to me before. And I was not excited about that. And I thought, you know what? I worked so hard. I found the deal, done the numbers, research. I gave everything, all the information to a fellow investor or potential investor. And then he went through my back and bought the property. That did not make me feel good because I was building my portfolio. I just bought my first property. I'm building capital so I can be able to have a down payment for my second property. So I take that income very, very seriously because I'm putting it towards a down payment for my next deal. And that's what you must be doing right now. If you say, I don't have any money, or I don't have any consistent income, or maybe you've used up your affordability with the banks and um, you know, you've probably maxed out your credit as well uh, and you figured out, you know what, maybe I can just you know raise some money, pay off some of my debts, and then also have some money to for buying costs so I can partner up with another investor so I can keep expanding my portfolio without having to wait to build some equity over time as well. So that's a very strategy that you want to consider. Most people overlook the sourcing even though they already have the skills to do that. You have the skills to find the deal. You just have the skills to find an investor. So coming back to reliable and qualified investor, let's talk about somebody who's reliable. Somebody who's reliable is somebody who said they're going to do something and they do it. And in business today, we know that word of mouth is good enough, but it's much better to have some things to write in writing as well to just affirm that they're agreeing to specific terms that you guys might have. And if they're not agreeing to that, it is, you know, from the start that they're not agreeing to the terms you have. And coming back to the reliable part, for in order for you to have a reliable investor, then there must be an agreement between you and the investor saying, hey, he's giving you appointment to go and find a deal for them. And then when you find a deal, you go and present it to the investor and you get paid for it, which is that simple. But people make it so complicated that they go out there, find deals, and then they post the deals everywhere on social media like any other sourcing agent. And the problem with that is that they're actually not getting a response because we as investors get so much um, deals on a daily basis that you know your computer probably has better deals and my students probably have better deals. I don't even have to look at your deals actually because I have students who have deals that I can buy myself. I can connect them with other buyers in my network to buy it. And you know it becomes a little bit more of a relationship thing for them as well. And they're benefiting from you know getting to become my students as well. And think about it just, this is how I think as one individual. Imagine other people, imagine other coaches, imagine other investors in the market. They can find deals themselves. They can find a lot of deals that are on the social media platforms, the same social media platforms that you are posting on as well. And that's where you have nothing that differentiates you from another person. And I can just go and call the agents online on Property 24 on your deal and go find them and put in an offer as well. So all those things are the things that, you know, the things you must realistically look at and they mustn't discourage you. They must really encourage you to be a little bit more organized. Okay, I think I have white hair here. Wow, getting old. So here's a, 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 something that you must do. Protect yourself and have something in writing. That's the best way you're going to make sure that you have a reliable investor. And that's also going to fool you to go find deals because you have somebody who's agreeing with you and saying, hey, if you find me a deal, I'm willing to pay it and I'm willing to look at you. And I'll also dis dis respect your non-disclosure. If you don't know what type of an agreement you need to do, you need to use an agreement called a bias agreement. I put a link in the description below where you can actually get a bias agreement from our store. Go in the store and invest in that. It's gonna, it's gonna be very, very important in your business. You wanna avoid all the scenarios I've spoken about because you will now have an agreement with an investor and they will also be committed to you for a specific period of time. And that means that you can now focus all your resources as a small business to actually finding them the best deal. You don't have the luxury of big businesses where we can you know, be able to leverage our network of brokers and then they can find us deals everywhere at any time. You are a small business owner. You wanna be sure that you are putting that, your time correctly and you are allocating your resources correctly as well. You're probably working with a smaller budget. You probably have don't have any car using an uber maybe that's how i started as well and uh, you probably have a specific budget that you want to be using for phone calls viewing etc and you want to be as frugal as possible as you're starting out so you don't want to be going out there spending your money on something that's not a guarantee 
And that is why it's very, very important to vet your investors, find out what type of investors you're looking for, and then put a deal together. We go into the details of, you know, how do you, you know, um, pre-qualify your investors, etc. cetera. Uh, not just using systems, but we have systems that can help you do that as well, but also using the criteria that they need. If you're part of our NMRI group, you should be able to get access to those lectures and videos that we did, and also the live Q&As that we do on by weekly basis as well <clears throat> so that's where we answer all your questions and etc and then you can be able to you know deal with these things in a more realistic sense with other investors and students who are on the same journey as you so a qualified buyer is just somebody who qualifies to buy that property <clears throat> most of you guys don't even know if your buyers are qualified you just get somebody who says i'm interested i did the same thing too i wanted to put it all together I had the money, I had everything under control just to find out that the investor doesn't qualify and wasted our time. We submitted all bank statements, financials that were not ready, um, you know, management accounts because it was through a business and we found out he doesn't even qualify at all and he just disappeared. He just stopped talking. I was so stressed out uh, because I actually put most of the effort and time putting this deal together. I had the cash. We're supposed to do a flip he's coming with a bond and that's something that we had to deal with as well my mistake i did not qualify my investors and that's what you guys are realizing as well that you have investors who are just coming to say i'm an investor and you go in the market say hey i'm going to do a deal with you i have an investor i'm working with and then when they come there they put an offer they get rejected you lose your reputation uh, agents don't trust you sellers don't trust you and that's a little bit of a problem as well so if you want your sellers your agents to trust you you have to make sure that you bring in pre-approvals. Say, hey, this is a pre-approval from my investor. This is how much they qualify for. And this is why we're looking at this deal and we can be able to do it as well. That start a relationship from a place of trust. And that's something very, very important as well. So the number one thing that is making you guys always fail when you're trying to source deals is just not having a qualified and reliable investor. So how do you sort that problem out? Get your investors pre-qualified. Use this link below. You're going to find a pre-qualification online application, which takes five minutes. It's for free. I'm giving us access for free. Uh, you can use my Bond Fitness pre-qualification. Just go click there and take your investors there. In five minutes, they'll get a certificate, and then they can be able to tell you how much they qualify for. That's the certificate you're going to need to use when you are approaching your investors or sorry your sellers and agents as well that's number one the second part is get a buyer's agreement guys invest if you're a sourcing agent and you don't have a buyer's agreement you are in for a long ride and this is why you need to invest in this buyer's agreement and make sure that you have an agreement with the investor you know when you're going to get paid how you know what is your role and then what is his role and then what do you need etc all those things must be covered out and also your confidentiality of the projects or properties that you're going to be presenting to them as well so i think this is a great video because this is something i wish i had when i was starting out and um this is something i wish i had learned when i actually discovered sourcing uh, as well to say hey this is actually a good way to actually make money and still be a player in real estate and also while i'm building capital um, I can be able to use this model to build more capital, to invest in more properties as well. And also, most importantly, learn how to talk to investors, learn how to raise money and staying in the game as well. So I wish this video was um, very, very you know, eye opening for you. And I want you to comment what's the biggest lesson you learned and also what are the mistakes that you did when you started to source your deals on your session journey as well. And why do you think they always fail? Obviously, tell us how you can improve. See you guys later and enjoy the video. Chat soon. Bye-bye.